Washington President Trump and Senator Chuck Schumer of New York, the top Democrat in the Senate, came close to an agreement to avert a government shutdown over lunch on Friday. But their consensus broke down later in the day when the president and his chief of staff demanded more concessions on immigration, according to people on both sides familiar with the lunch and follow-up calls between Mr. Trump and Mr. Schumer. The negotiations between Mr. Trump and Mr. Schumer, fellow New Yorkers who have known each other for years, began when the president called Mr. Schumer on Friday morning, giving the White House staff almost no heads up. In a lengthy phone conversation, both men agreed to seek a permanent spending deal rather than the stopgap measure being negotiated by lawmakers on Capitol Hill. Less than an hour later, Mr. Schumer was meeting with Mr. Trump over cheeseburgers in the president's study next to the Oval Office. The White House Chief of Staff, John F. Kelly, was there, as was Mr. Schumer's Chief of Staff, Mike Lynch. As the meal progressed, an outline of an agreement was struck, according to one person familiar with the discussion, Mr. Schumer said yes to higher levels for military spending and discussed the possibility of fully funding the president's wall on the southern border with Mexico. In exchange, the president agreed to support legalizing young immigrants who were brought to the United States as children. Mr. Schumer left the White House believing he had persuaded the president to support a short, three to four day spending extension to finalize an agreement, which would also include disaster funding and health care measures. In my heart, I thought we might have a deal tonight. Mr. Schumer recalled later on the Senate floor, shortly after the government officially shut down at midnight. At 11.55 p.m., he had been greeted with a blistering White House statement that Senate Democrats own the Schumer shutdown. Mr. Trump, a one-time real estate mogul whose book The Art of the Deal proclaimed his mastery of negotiation, has struggled at times to seal deals as president. He inserted himself into health care negotiations last March, only to see talks in the House collapse. In September, a deal-making dinner with Chuck and Nancy Mr. Schumer and Rep. Nancy Pelosi of California, the House Minority Leader later devolved into angry recriminations and he has so far failed to bring his promised trade talks to a close. On Friday afternoon, when Mr. Schumer was back on Capitol Hill, Mr. Trump called Mr. Schumer, a person familiar with the call said, and told him that he understood they had agreed on a three-week spending deal, not three or four days. Mr. Schumer told the president, the person said, that Democrats would oppose a three-week measure because they saw it as a delaying tactic. A White House official said that Mr. Schumer raised the possibility of a one- or two-day extension, but Mr. Trump told Mr. Schumer to work out the details of a short-term measure with Senator Mitch McConnell of Kentucky, the majority leader. A short time later, Mr. Schumer called the president, the person said, but the conversation drove the pair even further apart. The immigration concessions from Democrats were not conservative enough, Mr. Trump told Mr. Schumer. The president said he needed more border security measures as well as more enforcement of illegal immigration in parts of the country far from the border. As the evening wore on, Mr. Schumer got a call from Mr. Kelly that dashed all hopes for a Trump-Schumer deal before the shutdown deadline of midnight. Mr. Kelly, a hardliner on immigration, the person familiar with the call said, outlined a long list of White House objections to the deal. A White House official familiar with the call said Mr. Kelly urged Mr. Schumer to work out the details of an agreement with Mr. McConnell. In a Twitter post at 9.28 p.m., Mr. Trump vented his pessimism on Twitter,
returning to his administration's efforts to try to make sure that Democrats receive the blame from voters angry about a government shutdown. Exactly one year from his inauguration not looking good for our great military or safety and security on the very dangerous southern border, Mr. Trump wrote. Dems want a shutdown in order to help diminish the great success of the tax cuts, and what they are doing for our booming economy. With talks between Mr. Trump and Mr. Schumer over, Republicans in the Senate scheduled a vote on a House-passed measure that leaders in both parties expected to fail. After the shutdown began, Mr. Schumer lamented the failure to reach a deal with the President, and blamed Mr. Trump for abandoning an agreement that was within reach what happened to the President Trump who asked us to come up with a deal and promised to take the heat for it. Mr. Schumer asked on the Senate floor. What happened to that President Trump? The invitation for Mr. Schumer to come to the White House for a face-to-face -face with the President had been a heart-stopping moment for conservatives that conjured up their worst fears, a closed-door deal between Mr. Trump and the wily Democrat. With Mr. Trump impatient to begin a golf and fundraising weekend at Mar-a-Lago, his Florida estate, there was once again the prospect that the president would publicly side with his Democratic adversaries, who refused to fund the government unless Congress passed legislation to protect the Dreamers. Privately, Mr. Trump's impulses had led him to ignore political protocols and his own Republican allies, like Speaker Paul D. Ryan of Wisconsin and Mr. McConnell, who had groused about the president in recent days that the Senate would consider an immigration bill as soon as we figure out what he is for. The lack of any success between Mr. Schumer and Mr. Trump was a failure of what might have been. Once, In the days after the 2016 election, Mr. Schumer saw a path toward working with Mr. Trump. Just as Mr. McConnell did at the time, Mr. Schumer believed he would be able to guide Mr. Trump who has few fixed positions toward his own initiatives. Mr. Schumer is one of the few elected officials in Washington with whom Mr. Trump had something of a bond before he won the presidency. An advisor to Mr. Trump once pointed out that if the president had to choose between spending time with Mr. Schumer or Mr. McConnell, he would pick the Democratic leader almost every time. Mr. Schumer appeared on a season 5 episode of The Apprentice, the reality TV show that helped Mr. Trump create a brand in the eyes of millions of voters as a take charge businessman. During the show, Mr. Schumer predicted that Mr. Trump was going to go places. During the transition, Mr. Schumer appeared on a panel at an event held by the Partnership for New York City, a business group, where Jared Kushner, the president's son-in-law, also spoke. Mr. Schumer told attendees that the Democrats had stymied their chances with a message that failed to track more closely with Mr. Trump's calls for fair trade. After the failed negotiations on Capitol Hill and at the White House, Democrats predicted that the public would blame Mr. Trump and his Republican allies for a government shutdown, citing past examples of political stalemates in which voters punished Republican presidents and lawmakers. Throughout the day, Mr. Trump told aides that he knows he is going to get blamed for the shutdown, regardless of what happens and how it goes down. But at the White House, Mr. Trump's aides maneuvered to try to shield the president from the political damage that could follow. At the same time, they waged an intense public relations campaign to argue that Democrats should shoulder the responsibility for keeping the functions of government operating. Mr. Trump delayed his afternoon departure for Mar a Lago, and aides said he had called members of both parties in hope of averting a shutdown that could have unpredictable repercussions in a midterm election year. Mick Mulvaney, Mr. Trump's top budget official,
said the administration would instruct agencies to use reserve funds and to transfer money from other agencies to keep operations in place. He said the national parks would remain open and the military would continue to function, but he said employees performing those jobs would be doing so without pay until a spending agreement is reached. In the morning, Mr. Mulvaney seemed resigned to failure, promising to manage the shutdown differently than President Barack Obama's administration did a 2013 shutdown. He accused Mr. Obama of weaponizing that shutdown to maximize outrage against Republicans.